Hi friends, are you ready to read our next Humphrey chapter? All right, let's jump right in. We are on chapter five today on page 37. Presence, presence, presence. I wanted to take you home for Christmas, but we're going to my grandparents' farm, helpful Holly explained in the car. It was Friday afternoon and I was on my way to her house for the weekend. I couldn't see where we were going because her mom had put a blanket over my cage so I wouldn't get cold. I tried burrowing under my bedding, but every time the car turned a corner, I slid from one side of the cage to another. My tummy felt a little wobbly from all that sliding. At one point, I got dangerously close to my bathroom corner, something I tried to avoid. Why couldn't Humphrey come with us to Grandma and Grandpa's farm? Holly asked her mom, who was driving. I told you, Holly, it's too long a drive for a hamster, especially in the cold. Mrs. Hansen answered, and Grandma and Grandpa have had enough animals on the farm already. I've never been on a farm, but I'd heard about them, and I wasn't interested in meeting some of those farm animals, such as large horses and cows and chickens and and chickens with sharp beaks. I don't think Humphrey would like sharp beaks. Just letting you guys know this is another shorter chapter today, okay? I'll still let you know when the last page comes. But they don't have a hamster, and I take care of him and make sure nothing happened to him, Holly said. The car slowed down and then stopped. My wobbly tummy felt better right away. How can I give Humphrey his present when he's somewhere else, Holly asked. I was even going to make a little stocking for him. I thought about that while she carried me to the house. Why would Holly make me one stocking when I have four paws? Stocking is kind of like another word for kind of like a sock. I thought about that while she carried me to the house. Why? Oh, I already read that part. My cage thumped and bumped as Holly carried it into the house. At last, the blanket came off and I realized that my cage was sitting on Holly's desk. I turned to look around and saw four eyes staring at me. Eek, I squeaked. Billy and Lily, this is Humphrey, Holly said. I looked again and I saw that the four eyes belonged to two bright orange fish swimming in a tank on the desk. In the middle of the tank was a bright orange castle. Humphrey, these are my goldfish. Do you like them? Holly asked. Yes, I squeaked and Holly giggled. I wasn't sure how much I liked Billy and Lily, but I tried to be polite. I'm going to do my homework right away, Holly explained. Then I can spend the rest of the weekend making presents. Remember what Mrs. Brisbane said, I squeaked. If only she could understand me. She didn't want to... She didn't want me to give gifts, but I've already started and I don't want to stop now, she said. Of course, I can't let you see your present, Humphrey, she told me. I want it to be a surprise. I like surprises as long as they're the good kind and I love, love, love my presents. My mind started racing as I tried to imagine what Holly would make for me. I already knew that Holly was not a lazy human. She was always the first to raise her hand when Mrs. Brisbane asked for a helper. I'd also notice that Holly could be a little too helpful at times. Mrs. Brisbane's favorite plant died when Holly gave it way too much water because she thought it would grow more that way. The poor plant drowned. Rolling Rosie Rodriguez got annoyed because Holly wanted to push her wheelchair when she didn't need help and forgetful Phoebe didn't like it one bit when Holly reminded her of things that she hadn't even forgotten. I knew Holly meant well, but I didn't know if it was a good idea for her to try to make so many gifts, especially since Mrs. Brisbane had told her to stop. See, I have this giant book of holiday crafts. Holly picked up a thick book and opened it. As she thumbed through it, I saw page after page of things to make with instructions on how to make them. As she showed me the picture, she told me about some of the gifts she was planning. She was making a bookmark for the librarian and a lanyard for Mrs. Wright's loud, loud, loud whistle. Mrs. Wright was the PE teacher at Longfellow School, and as far as I'm concerned, I'd like her better if she didn't have a whistle at all. I'm making a calendar to help Phoebe remember dates and this cloth bag for Rosie to hang on the side of her wheelchair to keep things in, she told me. Oh, and I'm making a miniature garden for Mrs. Brisbane to replace that plant that died. Holly's list was so long, I couldn't remember everything she was making. She did say she was making something special for Augs 
tank, but she didn't say a thing about my present. Then she started snipping and clipping and gluing. She had, she had music playing in the background, which was nice until I heard jingle bells and I thought about Joey. I hope he felt better. Holly, don't you want to watch a movie with us? Mr. Hansen said when he came in after dinner. I need to work on my presents, Holly said. It's only two weeks until winter break and I have 25 presents to make. So many. Mr. Hansen's eyebrows went up. Who are they for? Everyone in my class, Holly said, and the teachers and the principal and everyone I know. Mr. Hansen shook his head. I don't think everyone in your class will be making a present for you. That's fine, Holly said. I like giving presents. I don't need, don't need to get any in return. Well, don't stay up too late, her dad said. After he was gone, I watched Holly cut and paste, color and tape, fold and glue. She used yarn, cloth, paper, and cardboard. She worked so long, I finally crawled into my sleeping hut and closed my eyes, even though I'm usually wide awake at night. I must have dozed off, but when I woke up, Holly's mom came in and told her that she had to go to bed right away. It's an hour past your bedtime, Mrs. Hansen turned off the music. But all I've made is a bookmark and two snowmen finger puppets, Holly complained. Holly, you're trying to do too much, her mom said. Yes, 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 I squeaked. I was getting tired of watching Holly work. Holly didn't agree. Mom, it's Christmas and Hanukkah, and that's when you give presents to people you like, right? Yes, but you could give them each a card, Mrs. Hansen said. Now put on your pajamas and you don't want to keep Humphrey awake, do you? Mrs. Hansen was a very thoughtful human. This is the last page of chapter five. I don't know about Holly, but I was so tired I fell asleep as soon as she went to bed until a bright yellow light awoke me, woke me up. I crawled out of my sleeping hut and saw that she was busy again, weaving the lanyard for Mrs. Wright's whistle. Whistle. A flashlight was propped up on the desk. Hi, Humphrey, Holly whispered. I'm going to make a few more presents. Okay, I squeaked. Although, to squeak the truth, I didn't think it was okay for her to do it so late at night. After all, humans and hamsters need plenty of sleep. I'm not sure about fish, though, because Billy and Lily always have their eyes and their mouths open. Holly picked up her scissors and cut some paper. Then she yawned. Holly picked up a marker and colored the paper. Then she yawned. I yawned too. She was gluing some yarn on some paper when the door opened and Holly's dad came in. Holly, get into bed now, he said. He sounded upset, so Holly didn't argue. She went right back to bed. Humphrey, I'm counting on you to make sure she stays in bed, Mr. Hansen told me. Me? I squeaked. I'll try. He chuckled and turned off the light. When he was gone, I kept an eye on Holly. I wasn't sure what I'd do if she tried to get up again, but luckily she slept soundly for the rest of the night. I guess I did too, because the next thing I knew, bright sunlight streamed in through the window. Humphrey's Winter Wonderings. How many presents could Billy and Lily make? They never seemed to sleep at all. All right, my friends, that is the end of chapter five. We will read chapter six tomorrow on page 44. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.